everybody, welcome back. Welcome to the kitchen for another, another live stream dinner uh, Wednesday. We missed out on Monday, sorry about that. The day completely got away from me. But um, let's talk about tonight's dinner. We're going to be making aloo gobi, one of my favorite Indian meals to have. Uh, if you see it on a rest in a restaurant, it's, it's probably in every Indian restaurant. Basically, aloo gobi means potato and cauliflower. So we're gonna be making a recipe with that today. Super simple. I found this recipe on on the internet actually, so it's based off of, 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 of a Bon Appetit recipe. Super simple to do. There's a YouTube video for it as well. And I thought, oh, this, this sounds really good because it, the one thing with making aloo gobi, I've tried to make it before, and the kind of, kind of what happens with it is it can get really mushy and soggy with the, with the cauliflower. So it's kind of like, it just, it's not necessarily as good as what you'd get in a, in a, in a restaurant. This recipe instead roasts it. So it's roasted cauliflower and potato and then makes the kind of curry mixture separately, tosses it in together. So it looks really simple ish. So we'll, we'll give it a try. I haven't made this recipe before, but we'll give it a try and we'll do it together. So thanks for joining me again, everybody. Let's see who's here today. Uh, da, da, I think we've got oh, Lorenzo's here. Hey, Lorenzo. Oh, do you, I don't know if you like curry or not. I know Nadia likes curry. Hey, Nadia, welcome. And Freddie's here. Welcome, welcome. And Stephanie, all the gang is all here. That's awesome. That's awesome. And Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Welcome. Uh, yeah, I love Indian food too, Nadia. I like, uh, this is probably one of my favorite ones. So let's go over, let's go over the ingredients. So we get it started. I have the oven heated, preheating up here to 400. So if you're wanting to follow, follow, I don't know if anybody's following along tonight, let me know. But if you're wanting to make it, preheat the oven to 400, all the ingredients and the directions are down below. So you can always come back to the, come back to the video as usual, check out the ingredients. Super simple. The only thing I, I realized I didn't have for this recipe is it calls for, as the spices, it calls for uh, turmeric, which I, which I have. So I have a ground turmeric here, uh, but it calls for uh, cumin seeds. And I, unfortunately, I thought I had some, but I don't. So I'm going to have to use the ground cumin. So it might be a little bit different, but we'll make do. I think it's going to be, be okay. Uh, ideally, you're going to want to have the, the cumin seeds traditionally. But other than that, it's basically we're going to be following for the most part, the recipe. So ingredients is uh, aloo gobi. So gobi is cauliflower. So we have a head of cauliflower and the recipe calls for a couple of russet potatoes. I don't have, they're not very big. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use four that we're gonna use. So I've got these ready to go. Those will get cut up. A small onion to dice. And I'm um, watching Nadia's comment here, cumin, cumin. Uh, some fresh ginger and this is what I didn't know with this recipe is I never I've tried to make it at home and kind of never really followed the recipe just kind of tried to wing it it calls for lime juice so a squeeze of lime juice at the very end so that's kind of interesting I had no idea about that so we're gonna use the it, it calls for a tablespoon of lime so about one lime but sometimes it says if you need extra we might put a bit extra on there and then to garnish just a little bit of a little bit of cilantro we'll chop up and put on top and to make it a little bit spicy, if you wish, we've got just some, these are just some crushed chilies we'll put on top as well. So let's get it started. I first actually have some rice. So I, I like having uh, curry with a bit of rice. So I'm going to just put on some rice first. We're going to use the instant pot for that. So we'll get it going. I've got it rinsed off already. Uh, good rice for this would be, normally would be basmati. And I actually don't have any basmati rice either. So I'm going to use some jasmine, some jasmine rice. So we're kind of going maybe a little bit, a little bit fusion. A little bit fusion here with the different types of rice. This is normally like for would be good for like a Thai dish, but that's okay. So that's rinsed. I'm just gonna put that on. I'm not gonna start it. I'm not gonna start it quite yet. I'll start it when I put the vegetables in the oven. And yeah, I found it interesting too, Nadia. I had like literally no literally no idea. So kind of something something different. So first thing first, let's get uh, Let's get everything chopped up and into the bowl. So what we want to do first for the cauliflower and the potatoes is cut these into like a nice size florets. You don't want the, you don't want the, bro the sorry, broccoli. You don't want the cauliflower too large because it's not going to cook, but you don't want it too small because you don't want it to go mushy either. So we want it kind of nice. I'll show you here as we go. 
just going to take out the stem and we'll use the hole. We'll use a whole one. This one's not huge. So sometimes you get these cauliflower and they're, gi they're giant. So and oh, hi, John. Welcome. I think it's your first time here. Welcome to the live stream. Everybody's friendly here, so say hi. So we want the we want the cauliflower roughly. Let's let's put it here so you can see as I go here. Kind of about the little pieces are fine, but you want them kind of that size, like floret, nice good size florets. And we're gonna cut up all those. Because once we toss these together, we want them we want them big enough so they're not gonna we don't want them to break apart either. And when we roast them, we don't we, we don't want them too small because we don't want them we don't want them to burn, right? So we'll cut those up. And ideally we're gonna roast them all together for about about 20 minutes or so just so they get a nice brown brownish kind of you know golden roasted color we've roasted vegetables before on the channel so same much the same same idea so into the bowl and what I'm going to do is we're going to be putting everything into the same bowl cuz we're going to we're going to toss them in a little bit of oil so there we are, some nice florets. Has everybody had, I know Nadia's had aloo gobi, has everybody had this? Has anybody not like not had this dish before? It's a good Indian Indian recipe. It's, um, and it's, uh, it's vegan, well there's no butter in this one, so it's vegan actually as well. And no, unfortunately Nadia, no broccoli. You put your, you put broccoli in, uh, in your uh, curry, but I, I don't. Uh, so these we want kind of like, think about, I guess, for the potato is kind of like a thick, a thick uh, French fry, I guess would be the best way. So kind of cut into three, it really depends on how big your potato is, but you want, you want the chunk, like a fair sized chunk. You don't want them too small, but you don't want them, you don't want them too big because you want to make sure that they're going to cook kind of at the same same time as the cauliflower for the potato. Because they're gonna be roasting it all together at the same time. And if you don't like the peel, you can always peel this, but I don't, you can just leave, leave the peel on. I've washed these and scrubbed them, so. So basically what I did with the potato is cut it into three and then cut it in, so basically we're cutting them into six, like so. We got a nice large, nice large bowl. So let's get that in the oven. Oh, and you haven't uh, tried it yet, Stephanie. Oh, you have to try. You'll have to try. It's really good. Simple. So there we go. Let's put this in the oven. I'm gonna put a bit of uh, olive oil. So a couple tablespoons of olive oil, and then I'm also gonna put some cracked pepper on there. And then just give it a give it a toss to make sure it's all kind of covered with the oil, like so. And the recipe calls for. I, I mean, I wouldn't normally do this, but we're following the recipe. So uh, the recipe called for a baking sheet covered in foil. Uh, I think the foil kind of more is to help it. To be able to take it out, out off of the tray after and pour it into the pot. That's my theory. It just makes it easier to pick it up in one, kind of in one in one go. You can, if I was making this without following a recipe again, I would probably just uh, put it right on the pan. But makes sense if you're wanting to do that and just uh, then we can at the end we can kind of just pick it all up and pour it into our pot. So makes sense. And uh, no, Gobi, I don't know what that one is. 
let me know, uh, Lisa. I have not had that one before. Uh, so we've got this cut out. Here we go. We're going to just put it into the oven. But we're going to basically put it in for 15 minutes. We'll give it. We'll just. We'll keep an eye on it. And we might have to. We'll just toss it a little bit when it's about halfway through, so both sides get get covered. And uh, of course, yeah, of course, cracked pepper. We always have to have the crack, the, the cracked pepper. There we go. So as that's in there, I am going to put the rice on so I don't forget. So rice, because that takes about 15 minutes or some, uh, give or take about 20 minutes. So hopefully everything, if we time it properly, should be ready at the same. That's ideally at the same, at the same time. So we'll get the rest of the stuff stuff ready and Christine's here I don't sorry I don't know if I said hi Christine but hi the gang is all here that is right everybody's here and a few new and a new people so that's good too I don't know if John's still watching but and the tinfoil I yeah you know what Nadia I've never I've never I mean I, I get I get it but I've just never never done that but makes sense I guess so let's get the rest of this recipe ready we want to we want to dice up our onion nice and small so I'll dice it up and leave it on the side here. Calls for a small, small onion, white onion. So as you can see, this is quite an easy, so far, simple recipe. And uh, and Lisa, I'm interested in that recipe. You'll have to uh, let me know what that is. I've never heard of it. I'll have to check it out after. I'll have to Google it. I haven't had Indian food in a long time. So this should be good tonight. I like Indian because it's, I like the spice and I like the, uh, like it's good for vegetarian dishes. I'm not vegetarian, but there's, it's always, it's always got some good flavorful vegetarian dishes, you know, with all the, like the dal and the lentils and lots of, uh, lots of vegetarian options. Oh, and Stella's here. Hey Stella, welcome. So with this one, let's move in here. Let's move a little bit closer. We're just going to do a nice, uh, just a small, small diced onions. So we'll get all the, get all the ingredients ready to start cooking for the, basically the, it's, it's not so much a sauce, but just the, the, I guess, I mean, I guess you would call it a sauce, but kind of the coat, more the coating of the spices for the aloo gobi. Because normally what would happen, I guess it would be all simmered kind of in the same, in the same pot. And that's where the cauliflower can get mushy if it gets overcooked. So like if you've had, if you have had this in, in a restaurant before, sometimes the alu gobi can come out. It's very, I mean, it's not, not liquidy, but it's definitely like a curry style where this, this recipe comes, it seems to be more of, I mean, it's obviously curry, but it's not as... It's not as saucy, I guess, would be the best uh, way to describe the recipe. Not quite as like heavy sauce, so kind of kind of lighter on the lighter on the sauce, heavier, more more vegetables kind of tossed in. So it looked uh, it looked good in the re in the in the picture, anyways. And I I scooped the picture for the thumbnail of the video. So if you saw the thumbnail, that's kind of hopefully what it should all look like. And Lisa, so uh, Gobi Manchurian has garlic, ginger, chili paste, and it's fried. Oh, okay. Interesting. Garlic, ginger, chili paste. Interesting. Is it, so it's almost kind of like a, maybe like a pakora a little bit, maybe? Yeah, interesting. I'll have to check out that recipe. Sounds good. I like anything cauliflower, really. Um, I like sometimes you go out and get those like cauliflower bites. Those spicy cauliflower bites are always good. Yeah. So there's our onion. And I'll get our ginger, our ginger ready as well, just to leave it on the side. So we'll peel the ginger. And the ginger, we're going to slice it thin and then julienne it to mix in there. And then we'll start our sauce. Uh, Lisa, you'll have to get, maybe get, Nor uh, maybe get Norman to make that, make, 
make uh, Gobi Manchuria on his next uh, on one of his streams, and we can and I can see it. That'd be good. So we'll just give this a nice thin slice. And as thin as as thin as you can get it. And I'll show you in the camera in a second. This one we have to just kind of do on the side. And there we are. So we just kind of got a thin ju julienne of, it's gonna break apart, but of, uh, that's the, the ginger. And that will go in as well. And our last, last but not least is the limes at the very end. We'll cut those in half and put them into the recipe. Let me just get a little dish for the, for the ginger. And then we'll get our pot out and we'll start, uh, we'll start cooking. Here we go. Get that out of the way. So kind of low, low, medium, this is, we're going to, what we're going to do, what we're going to do first is, is, uh, is kind of cook off the spices. That's the secret with a, cooking with a lot of the, a lot of Indian cooking is, and even some Thai cooking as well with the spice, you want to cook the spice because it brings out the, it brings out the flavor and it cooks, it cooks that way. You don't want to cook all your, put all your ingredients in and then throw the spices in. It, the spices don't taste the same and they don't, they don't cook the same. You need the oils. You need the oil, hot oil, to bring out all the, basically all the spice. I guess would be the best way to describe, please describe it. And um, oh, there we go. Yeah. So good, uh, John. Good. Yeah. Parchment paper could work, although you won't get the same brown. You could, but sometimes you don't get the same browning in in vegetables if you put parchment down because it it's not touching the metal, so it doesn't get quite as hot. I think. But you could do that if you had it. Why not? I, I think if I wasn't, if I was doing this again, I mean, I'm following the recipe because it is the, the, the Bon Appetit recipe. So I'm kind of just following it as it goes. Um, so, but if I was making this at home, if you don't have foil, just, just skip it and use it on the pan. You'll have a bit more cleanup on the pan, but, and a bit more, you have to be careful getting it out, but it would still work. Oh, and thanks Lisa. Yeah, I'll keep an eye out for that email. Awesome. And again, a quick and easy, yeah. That's our, that's our, that's our, uh, that's our regular, uh, meals, quick and easy. Quick and easy. And Sam's here. Hey, Sam. Welcome. We're doing aloo gobi tonight. Uh, we've got, I've got the rice cooking. We've got all the prep basically done. We're just kind of waiting to start it. And the call it, this is different because it's roasted. So the cauliflower and so the aloo, the potato and the cauliflower are roasted in the oven. And then at the end, we're stirring it in with a, like kind of the sauce coating of the, of the turmeric and the cumin and the, um, with the onions and ginger. So something a little different. I found this recipe online. Oh, and Norm is here. So there you go. You'll have to add it to your, add it to your list or one of us will do it. Maybe I'll try it. <laughs> All right, let's give this going. This is kind of low, medium low, and then a couple more tablespoons of oil. And like I said, normally it would be cumin seeds, but I don't have any. So I'm going to be using, as soon as I get my wooden spoon, my wooden spoon I'm going to use uh, about a teaspoon or so of uh, cumin powder because I don't have the seeds. Ideally, you want to put the seeds in and what's going to happen is the seeds are going to get kind of a nice toasted, 
they're going to get kind of a nice toasty, like toasty color, but we'll do the same thing. We'll, we'll cook off the cumin as well with about a teaspoon or so of the turmeric. And let that, we're going to let that kind of, you'll see it kind of bubble the oil. You don't want to burn it, but it's going to kind of start to bubble and cook the, cook the spices. So we're going to want to do that for just a couple minutes before we add the onion. And I got this next time. I, I'm going to have to add some, some, some cumin seeds to my next list because I bought some, some turmeric. I have the, we've got that Silk Road spice market locally here. And uh, I got the turmeric there, but I'll have to get some cumin seeds. It smells really good. And the nice, like the color on this is, is uh, it's, it's camera's never going to pick it up the same, but it's like fluorescent yellow. It's crazy how bright this, this turmeric is. So. This is the first time, this is the first time in a recipe I've used it. So we'll just let that kind of cook for a bit, let the flavors come out. But super easy recipe, one pot. And yeah, I love Indian food too, Sam. Our, one of our favorite, one of our favorites for sure, I think would be, would be definitely Indian food. Uh, Italian, obviously pasta, Italian food, for sure. We do that a lot on the channel too, but Indian's up there. But the thing about Indian though, is you can never, this is going to be good, but I think it's never the same as when you get someone who is from like a low, like a local cook, like if you're at the Indian restaurant, like there's just something about the mixture of spices or something that they do that is you'll never get the same. It's the same, I think, with like any kind of ethnic cooking. You can, you can, you can, we can emulate it a little bit, but never, it's never this exactly the same because they have those little, little things they do, I think, that just give it that extra that you can't uh, replicate. So I'm going to throw those onions in there. And just turn it down. We want these to cook just to kind of get translucent, but not, not burned. So I've just kind of got it as low as really low on there. So we'll keep an eye on it, but we don't want it. We definitely don't want it to, to burn. Yeah, the secret, I don't know, it's the secret spice. You, it's, it's like, uh, I don't know. And they'll make a recipe that don't even follow a, don't even follow a recipe and just throw, throw, throw stuff in and it's, and it's like uh, unwritten and it tastes, tastes good. Mexican food is like that too. When you go to a, like a good Mexican restaurant, just the smells and everything is completely different than what you you know, what you get at home. You can't replicate it. Okay, let's give this, uh, that's coming along nicely. Not burning yet in the oven. That's on low. And just let those kind of sweat. Let's take a look. We'll take a look at the oven and uh, see where, see how our, our cauliflower and potato are doing. So we can a look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them over. Just to give them a toss. They're going to need a bit more. Whoops. You can still tell they're a bit firm, but I'll show you here as we, so I just gave them a quick, quick toss with the, with the tongs, but they're still quite firm. So they probably need another 10 or so minutes. 
So we'll be good. I'm just gonna lower that down. There we go. Perfect. Now for this, we'll keep an eye on the, the onions. I'm gonna add the ginger. Oh, and mom's here. Hey mom, welcome. It's okay. If you're late, it's okay. Welcome. The gang's all here. And that's the that's the ginger. So mom, we're, I don't know, mom, you don't like curry. I know that. So you're not missing out. <laughs> we're doing alu gobi, which is potato and cauliflower. But I know you don't like curry. And uh, yeah, everybody loves Indian food. Um, so everybody loves, um, no, yeah, don't use put potato and curry because of with the rice. Yeah, I, this, this one you wouldn't necessarily, necessarily definitely wouldn't need rice, Nadia, but I kind of just like having some rice on the side. It just kind of bulk, bulk, bulks it up. And, um, oh, yams might be good though too. That's a good idea. But I don't know how this would taste with yams. Maybe it'd be good. We made yams the other day. We made yam fries in the air fryer. It was tasty. So let's just let's just kind of go in. Got to keep an eye on that just so it doesn't uh, doesn't burn. And um, so everybody, yeah, Norman. Everybody seems to like the um, like the like the Indian food. I don't know what your, what your favorite Indian dish is. This this one is actually mine. I'll get this all the time, uh, alu gobi. But I also like like butter chicken. I like, and I like a lot of the dolls. I like really anything that I'll have on on that. Oh, you could do that. Good idea, Sam. Chickpeas would be good. I don't know what chickpeas are called in like if there's a tr like obviously there's a name in Indian food what some of the chickpea dishes are I'm not sure but. so this is going along nice let's just leave that yeah chickpeas would be good so what I learned with this with this when you're making the like when you're making the the mixture here you could you could kind of make this ahead of time and let it, and then just reheat it when you need it. So if you were to make extra, you could obviously make some, I think make some, make some extra of it and leave it in, let it cool down and put it in the fridge overnight. It's going to be fine. But the next day it's possibly make other curries with it. Um, so make the one with the, like this, the cauliflower and potato. And then the next day make something with, if there's leftover, make it with just toss in uh, chickpeas or something like that, or even, even some, if you had like some, some meats or something you wanted to put in there, I think you, I think it would be fine. It smells good. So, um, I think it's going to taste pretty good too. So butter, yeah, see butter chicken. Yeah. Butter chicken is good. Butter chicken is good. And Kind of masala. I'm not sure what one that is, Nadia. What's that? Is that with lentils or anything like that? And I think, yeah, lamb. Yeah, lamb curry. I'm not a huge lamb. Norm, I'm not Norman. I'm not a huge lamb lover. I rarely have it. I can't. Rem I couldn't even tell you the last time I had. I had lamb. It's been. It's been ages. But every once in a while, like if we go on vacation or something like that, I would probably. I would sometimes maybe have it like a lamb chop. Like sometimes you go to reception, you know, when you go to like, I was the last time I probably had one was maybe like at a, at a reception or something. You know, when they sometimes give those lamb, the lamb chops, that's probably the last time I had it. Or maybe it was on a trip, I think maybe. And there was um, like a reception or something like cocktail reception with those, the lamb, the lamb, the lamb chops. It's a hard lamb. Lamb is a difficult, like, it's it's a long cooking meat. It's, it was, and I remember from cooking in hotels, we would have rack of lamb on the menu sometimes. Some of the some of the restaurants, and it's not the easiest. It's not and for like for banquets, the, the odd time would be, would be um, would be rack of lamb, and uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work because there's a lot of preparation for it to get it all. You'd have to we'd have to French all the bones, right? Um, we're getting sidetracked from curry here, but back. I remember doing, we did at uh, the hotel, at the Hotel Vancouver, we'd had the, this is, we had, 
won't mean as much won't mean as much to to you maybe norman but we had the queen came to the hotel i forget what year it was it was it was back in the 90s i i think she came came to the hotel and had a luncheon and rack of lamb was on the was where rack of lamb was on the menu was what, what what she would have and so we had to do rack of lamb for all the the people that were there for well for the queen and for the all the all the all the meal uh that was there and all fancy had like you have to scrape the scrape the bones so they're white and and uh cooking it is is it's kind of almost an art because it it's a it's a difficult meat to kind of judge how it's done it takes lots of it takes lots of practice for sure because you can't uh like once you let it the secret with lamb is to let it rest and but once you cut it open you, you can't you know you're it's got to be it's got to be perfect or else you're feeding you're not gonna the queen's not gonna be happy <laughs> So that was the the lunch with the queen. And the interesting thing with that, when we did the preparation for that, they had security all the time, like everywhere with um, watching everything. And then the meal that was that was prepared for like for the actual que actual queen was done separately by the head chef. He had to do it separately and they had to they watched like watch like hawks to make sure everything was everything was good. And there was a whole list. It was it was a whole list of it was a whole list of like things that she can and cannot. And for the menu that was done, there was a whole list of things she cannot, can and can't, can't have. So certain things like nothing with seeds. So not, nothing that would get stuck in her teeth and no strawberries, like different things like that with little seeds, no spinach. Um, but yeah, so it was kind of, it was, it was a lot of work, but it was, it was a lot of fun. I got to see the queen and cook lunch for the queen. Well, not directly, but for the party, so. You got to keep the keep the queen happy. Yeah, uh, very particular with what she uh, with what she had. <laughs> the snob. Yeah, uh, totally sidetracked. That's too funny. So that's our beeping is the is the, is the rice. I forget what year she was in Vancouver back then. Because the time previously when she was in that hotel, like in Vancouver was when she opened the hotel. It was like opened in 19, what was it, 39? What year was the Hotel Vancouver opened up? I, I'm so bad, I used to work there, I can't remember now. 30, 39, I think? So she came for the, the opening of the hotel, and then she came after, um, to when she was in Vancouver doing the tour, she came and went to the hotel. So it was like the second time that she was there, yeah. So that was it. Maybe Nadia, maybe, maybe Rob knows when the queen was first in Vancouver, but. <laughs> oh, paneer is good too. Yeah. Yeah, Sam, I like the paneer. I do like that. Rich though. So I've turned, I just turned this kind of down and off. I'm going to turn it back on just to kind of warm it back up. And we're going to check the, we're going to check the vegetables. So we're just keeping this hot. quickly check that because that's takes about the the rice takes about 15 minutes and we're getting there I'm gonna check the move this to the side I'm gonna check the vegetables just to make sure that the basically making sure that the potatoes are cooked let's take a look so you can see it's kind of getting a little bit brown it's gonna need a little bit more yeah I would say five more minutes We'll give it a stir. It's close though. Let's, I'm gonna test one of the potatoes. So as you can see, the broccoli is still gonna all stay together and not be, not be overly uh, soggy, which is nice. Let's just check that. I can tell right now the potato, you can still see it's a bit, a bit firm. So probably five or 10 more minutes until it will be ready, but we're close. And with the uh, with the rice, uh, we'll just let it sit, and we'll it's ready to go. Um, it's ready to go when we need it. We'll just open it up, and it will be will be fine to use. So, so we'll just leave that up, and we can just wait and chat. I guess I never asked everybody what they're having for dinner tonight. You know what I'm having, but what's everybody else having? And I'm drinking water, the usual, the usual water.
and we're right on time actually because it's 535 here so we've been going for about half an hour so we're on target for having dinner in less than an hour or an hour or less so that's pretty good I think for the for the channel let's see if I missed any questions Jamaican lamb curry oh that sounds interesting yeah cabbage Nadia's having cabbage Ooh, I should send you Nadia I have to do it on the I'll have to do it on the channel one day is let me move this closer so I'm not out of the out of the way um, there's a great cabbage recipe Nadia in uh, in this cookbook in the Italian the uh, Marcella Hazan cookbook made it for lunch one time it's um, uh, smothered cabbage with orzo not sorry not not orzo uh, smothered cabbage with um, what am I trying to say rice uh, arborio rice and it's kind of like a it's kind of it's kind of like a risotto but not as not as thick and but not as runny as a soup so kind of in between um, but it was a really good really good recipe the the cabbage gets the cabbage gets uh, cooked for over an hour kind of in uh, in like in like oil and butter and then just kind of kind of simmers and then you add you add in it's super simple recipe you basically add in or uh, keep saying orzo arborio rice and some stock and then you you cook it that way and at the end it gets finished still with uh, grated a grated uh, Romano like cheese the same way as you'd finish a risotto so good though really good I, it would be a nice um I mean it's a kind of a good summer it'd be a good summer cool summer evening dinner for sure because it's kind of soupy kind of warm but 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 light as well it wasn't super heavy I'll make it one day on the channel I've got cabbage last time we had cabbage we made okonomiyaki on the channel but I think I have some cabbage when I have some cabbage I will I will make it again because it was good and I have I have lots of the uh, rice and Stephanie's having grilled Applejack cheese sandwich with homemade pickles Ooh, that sounds good I I want to make pickles actually because I have been kind of looking at some videos and I might do some pickle I saw a good video for making pickled onions Stephanie on on one of the channels that I follow for one of the one of the uh, cooks and he did pickled red onions and I, I want to make some super simple recipe uh, but recently in can I don't know we've had a recall on red onions so I had to, I actually had some red onions I had to I had to get rid of because of the recall because there was salmonella I guess in them so probably not the best to use red onions for pickles when you're not sure when it's all been recalled a whole bunch of them have been recalled and some of the other pack like prepackaged stuff has been here so um, I have to go get new red onions I'm gonna try pickled red onions but the grilled cheese sounds good I haven't had grilled cheese in a long time we don't eat we don't eat a lot of eat a lot of cheese just because we're, obviously we, like I think everybody kind of knows we're doing the very we're trying to low low sodium and there's lots of salt in cheese like a lot of cheese right obviously we do have the limit little bit of the Romano cheese grated but a little goes a long way so we kind of that's hard to cheat a little bit so but we used to make super grilled cheese so you have different cheese goat cheese and porcelain cheese the different mix of cheese and the secret with grilled cheese Stephanie I don't know if you I don't know if you know this um, if the grilled cheese if you don't have butter on the on the uh, bread use mayonnaise on the outside of your bread before you grill it try that one time super good and the bread is used uh, I think you have a different let me see what kind of bread you said oh no apple jack cheese sandwich we're gonna uh, try with grilled cheese try a sourdough tasty sourdough with um, use mayonnaise instead of butter on the outside the next time 
Yeah, refrigerator pickles. That's what this one. That's what this one was. It was refrigerator um, pickled onions, and then so you could have it like at a topping with different with different things, right? Um, it would even be good on this to have a little bit of a little bit of pickles. Applejack, yeah, it's like Monterey, isn't it? Isn't Applejack? Isn't it's not like the smoked smoked Jack like Monterey Jack teas, is it? I, I'm not sure. I've seen that before. Or apple like applewood smoked, or is it just like actually apple? Some like apple flavor in there. Yeah, notes of that. Okay, yeah. And John's having crab. Oh, crab cakes are good. Good choice. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, let's uh, let's check our vegetables. Oh yeah, they're almost there. Let's give them another couple minutes, though. I want them to be. I want the potatoes to get a bit more brown. So probably we're four five forty. So probably give it five minutes, then we'll plate it. We'll get it all all together. So as you can see, an easy, easy dinner, not much, not much prep, which is good. And John, yeah, I haven't had crab cakes in a long time either. I had, I made tuna, a tuna, uh, tuna wraps with homemade tortillas. That's the closest thing I've had to crab for a while. Though we don't live on the coast anymore, so I'm sure we can get it here, but it's not like as abundant when you're not near the ocean. Oh, and mom's having pierogies. That sounds good. I like pierogies. Oh, the fruit bowl. That's my bananas for breakfast, Stephanie. And that's, we've got some garlic left. I don't know if Christina is still watching, but we had that, remember we had that big thing of garlic back there? We've only got like th three, a few, a few bits of, we've used a lot of the garlic. So, Dean, if you're watching, you'll be happy to know that you can't see the garlic anymore there. And that's my bananas for, for breakfast. I should do my I should do a breakfast live stream. It's, it's pretty boring though. I either have oatmeal in the, I either have oatmeal in the, in the instant pot or I, if I, that's if I forget to do my oatmeal in, like I put oatmeal in milk to make like muesli for the night before. If I forget to do that, the next morning I make it regular oatmeal in the Instant Pot. So people have asked where, how come I haven't used the Instant Pot on the channel for a while to do recipes. It's great for winter recipes, like those pot, you know, kind of like pot recipes. Good for rice tonight, but I use it almost every, every other day for making oatmeal. Let's check these potatoes. I'm just gonna cut one in half. I think they're gonna need a little bit more. I'm pretty sure my oven, I say this every time, is lower than what it actually says. Pretty sure. Yeah, they need, the potatoes need a little bit more. Close though. They're hot. We don't want them too mushy though, because once we mix them all together, we don't want to get mashed potato. Because it's almost gonna cook a little bit more in the pot. We still have to put the chilies in, but I'm gonna put those on at the end. I haven't forgot the chilies. Oh, Mike's here. Hey Mike, welcome. We're almost done. Alu Gobi. I think you might have had a gobi when you're over visiting, Mike. I don't know if we had Indian one time or not. Maybe. I I need to, yeah I need to get uh, Nadia. If I make oatmeal on the stove, I burn it in the bottom of the pots. I can't cook rice on the stove, and I can't cook, and I can't cook oatmeal on the stove. <laughs> It'll burn. <laughs> and I need uh, I need a thermometer. I need to every time I. I say this, I always say, I gotta get a thermometer so I can calibrate this oven, but um, I, I always forget. I know I have to, they are easy to do. It just feels, it just feels like, um, uh, it's always, I don't know, not hot, like hot, hot as it says it is. And it doesn't show you, with this oven, it tells you, it doesn't, it doesn't show you the temperature that it's at. So it only shows, It'll, it'll show, 
it's it's kind of it's kind of silly because it'll show you like I have it up to 420 like 425 it'll say 425 but it never displays what the temperature actually is so I don't you don't know if it's gone down it has to go up like it's just it's whereas the, the, uh, the other place we were at it would if it got low it would show you it was low and it would it would show you it's heating up so I don't know yeah, well, no, you caught us at the end here, Mike. We're almost finished, but we haven't eaten yet. So you came, you came, really, you came at the right time. Came right, right on time. <laughs> and we've got the limes to put in too. So limes and, limes and hot sauce. Yeah, I haven't, I mean, Stephanie, I haven't, I haven't um, cooked the ga gas for, I mean, it's been, we had a place one time with a gas stove. But the, or sorry, the oven wasn't gas, it was electric, but the, the gas range was, was gas and it had like a wall oven that was electric convection, which convection is really nice, but not a gas. I haven't cooked on gas for, it's been, it's been like, what year is it? It's been like 10 years, more, about 10 years. See there, it'll beep when it's up to temperature, but it doesn't actually tell you what temperature it is. So, and Mike had pizza, pizza sounds good. All right. These are, these are ready. So I'm just gonna put those in there. I'm gonna heat up, heat up the mixture while we're, and then once this is heated up, we will add the, add the cauliflower and stuff, cauliflower and potato. And our and our and our spices. Pizza sounds good. I've been a pizza for a long time. Mike, I have um, I have a flour to make uh, pizza dough, like actual pizza flour, pizza dough flour. Uh, again, from my cook the cookbook that I got. So I'll um, I'll make pizza dough eventually. So we'll cut the get the limes cut in half, so I can give them the squeeze. At the end, we don't need the cutting board anymore. We just, we just need to get everything into the pot. Now the recipe calls to take it out of the oven and actually still cook a little bit in the pot. So that's why the, uh, everything kind of needs a little bit more time, but not a lot, because it's still gonna cook as we're stirring it in. See, and I don't know about this idea of foil because it, the potatoes kind of do stick a little bit, but we'll have to scrape them off. But I guess that's better than cleaning your, uh, cleaning your pan, so into the pot and we'll get all the bits. So, so we don't need that anymore. And we wanna just give that a stir so it's all coated. Whoops, put those in. And it smells good. Like so. I'm gonna turn that down. And nice and coated. Let's get, once that's done, let's get the lime in there. This is looking good. These aren't very juicy limes. I'm gonna use the, the reamer. So it asks for about a tablespoon of lime juice. 
give or take. These are definitely not the juiciest. So as you can see, it's coming out the oven. It's still going to cook a little bit as it's as it's in here, and the vegetables still have kind of a bit of a. They're going to have a bit of a crunch still, and not be all, all so, you know, all soggy. Because if you've had aloo gobi, sometimes it comes out quite juicy. There we go. We've got a little bit there. Last lime. Last bit of lime. And the last little bit, some coriander, cilantro. And we like it spicy. Yeah, it's starting to look, uh, it's starting to look yummy. It smells good. So these are just some crushed chili flakes, not too spicy. You can do that to taste. If you don't like it super spicy, you can leave that off. So there we go. Aloo gobi, roasted, roasted potato and cauliflower aloo gobi. Smells really good. I think we're, uh, I don't know, Stephanie, we might be getting, uh, I didn't forget the, uh, I didn't forget the, I didn't forget the pep pepper flakes. No, thanks, Terry. And the lime, the lime really brings out the, you can really bring up, brings out the smells actually, Nadia. You can smell the lime quite good. So there we go. That is done. Still on kind of low. Let's get the rice and... Then we'll then we'll give it a taste. That's the lid. And actually, easy cleanup. You know what? I don't mind that. Uh, I don't. I don't mind that the the foil because I can just toss that like toss that right away, and then my pan which is still a bit warm is actually is actually clean. So that's actually one less one less dish to wash. I like that. I like that a lot. Let's get some rice on a bowl. And we'll give this a taste. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a it's a bon appetit recipe, Sam, and that way it doesn't get, doesn't get soggy, which is good. I like it. So a little bit of rice. And for serving, you could turn this out into a larger serving, serving bowl. If you're going to serve it like at the, t at the table, but what I'll do is I'll just have, um, let me get my, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to get my larger, larger spoon just to serve, serve some on my, uh, on my plate. Like so. It's got a nice color. I like that. And then if you want to add it, have some more, you could have more uh, cilantro, the cilantro leaves on, on top. I threw them all in there. So there we go. I'm just going to turn that off and just cover it up so it stays warm so Jay can have some when we're done. So let's take a look and we will, one thing you got to be careful is with the turmeric, you don't want, it's, it's so yellow, it'll stain and you want to make sure you don't, uh, 
So you want to wear like an apron or something like that, but you don't want to get it on anything like you, on the dishcloths and stuff. It's going to, uh, it probably won't actually wash out because it, it really likes to stain. So you want to be careful on your counter to make sure you clean it up right away. That's one thing about turmeric. There we go. Roasted. There we are. Roasted cauliflower and potato. Uh, well, ali gobi with roasted, but roasted with a little bit of rice on top. Let's give this a taste. It smells good. I think it might need some, a little bit more chili flakes, but it's because I do like it spicy, not super spicy, but a little bit, a little bit kick. So we'll give it a try and it looks good. Let's see. And it's nice cause it's not too, not too kind of soupy. And that's one thing with aloo gobi I've found is sometimes it's just overcooked and it just gets too mushy. So let's give it a taste. Hmm. Yeah, it's tasty. It's different. It's different with the roasted vegetable than the, the, the last time I had Indian food, but good, good variation on it. I think, like at the beginning, we didn't use, no, it's good. We didn't use the, the cumin seeds. So that might probably make a little bit of difference. I'll definitely try it with the seeds next time when I get them, but. Mmm, tasty, tasty meal and fast. So that was an hour. There we go. That's a good one. That's a good one. The moan test, a little bit of a moan, a little bit of a moan. I think Stephanie, the moan comes out when there's like cheese and cream involved. I think that's, that's the secret to the, to the moan when I, <laughs> when I taste stuff, but this is really good. A little bit of pipe. I got a little bit, a little bit of sweat in my brow, but that's good. And it's different, isn't it? It's no, it's, 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 uh, the lime kind of took it. It's, it's a different, I guess a different take on a recipe. So the lime kind of, you can taste the lime and I wasn't, I've never really noticed that, I guess, maybe in, in a, in a traditional aloo gobi or the ones I've had, but it might be from a different region or something like that. I, that I don't know. I was just following the, the, basically the recipe from, uh, Bon Appetit, their test, their test kitchen. So it was a variation of that. So a little bit of a twist maybe, but good. No, it was good. I'm going to have, uh, another, like I'll eat this for sure. And I think it will, it will, uh, if there's any leftovers, it will, It'll hold good in the fridge to heat up again. You can kind of throw it in. Won't be quite as roasted, crunchy vegetables. I like the roasted. I like the roasted part of it because it makes it a bit like kind of still a bit of a crunch, and it's it's lighter tasting than kind of a heavy, heavy uh, saucy curry. There we go. That's it. Uh, so we've got twelve people watching. So thanks everybody for tuning in. It's always good to see you. Uh, thanks for joining me on a Wednesday. If you haven't already, let's hit the, if you could hit the thumbs up just before you head out, we are, we are kind of done. So thanks for joining me for dinner. Hopefully you did learn something and I did have fire trucks go by. You can actually hear those. Yeah. We're like the fire stations kind of like a couple blocks away coming for the spice. Um, but not, uh, but not too hot and John. Yeah. So a little hot, little more hot sauce for sure. I got some, I got some red chili oil that I, would be good drizzle on there for sure. And uh, even a few more chili flakes on top would be good. So, uh, thanks for joining everybody. Yeah. And I saw some thumbs up come in. So thanks to everybody that did that before leaving and yeah, Mike, so we're at 1,000, 1.42 K subscribers. So I appreciate everybody that's subscribed. That's awesome. Um, it's, uh, I'm getting new people every day. So it's pretty kind of nice. So if, to all the new people that are here, thanks for joining me. If this is your first time, obviously come back. We do regular ones try and get them scheduled every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, five o'clock. But I also jump in and do the odd live one. And I've had people ask for some more kind of impromptu live at different times. Now that everybody is getting back to a bit more normal, working with schedules, that kind of stuff, or out uh, because it's summer, out a bit more. 
So kind of jumping on at different times and to help the different time zones. Um, so hit the notification bell and you'll get notified when I go live. And I also post regular videos as well uh, on the channel, growing the herbs for the arrow garden, which is right here on the counter. It's been growing for a month now. I have a video posted for that. So check that out if you haven't seen it. We're gonna be using some of the basil in an upcoming recipe, maybe on Friday. So we'll see. There we go. Thanks everybody. Have a great night. I'm gonna go eat my curry before it gets too cold. So if you try this recipe out, Make sure you leave me a comment. Come back, leave a comment, and let me know how you liked it. And if you did like it, maybe share it to a friend. Have them join, or have them invite them to the next live stream. There you go. Have a great night.